Hi, welcome back. As mentioned in video one, now we're going to start taking a look at the calculus behind natural logs, mainly the derivative today. So recall, we saw in video one, we defined the natural log as an integral. And you were all like, oh, that looks familiar. That's just our second fundamental theorem of calculus, second FTC. And you were absolutely right. Therefore, to find the derivative, we're going to use that second fundamental theorem. So we're going to take the derivative of both sides. And you may recall, all we do, the shortcut, is we replace all t's with x's. Now, the book is going to write it a little bit different. The book is going to say the derivative of the natural log of x is 1 over u du dx. Now, I'm not a big fan of this technique right here because it can get confusing for people. Okay, All they're really mentioning here is that there is going to be a chain rule. Don't worry about this. Most students never miss chain rule. And I'll just give you an example. So when we take the derivative of natural log of x, it's just 1 over whatever x is. This takes a very long way. And I'll show you what I mean by it. We'll, we'll maybe see something like that later on. So we want to find the following derivatives. So we want to find the derivative of the natural log of 2x. Well, my rule says it's just going to be 1 over x. So when I take the derivative dy dx, my rule says it's just going to be 1 over 2 times x. Now we do have to take the derivative of the inside. <coughs> the chain rule. Well, what's the see, they're saying let u be the inside. What's the derivative of u? Just 2. So don't write out this rule. Just know the derivative. Just use chain rule. So the chain rule says take the derivative of the inside 2x, and that gives us 2. Of course, those cancel out. And what we're left with is the derivative being 1 over x. Now, there's another way. we can use the properties. Now this is why we like log properties. Okay? To use the properties, my rule says, I, since I'm multiplying, I can write this out as an addition problem. I can write this as the natural log of 2 plus the natural log of x. So when we take the derivative, we're going to get dy dx equal to, now this is just a constant right here. See how much easier this is? So that whole derivative is just 0. Plus, what is the derivative of natural log of x? My rule says that's just 1 over x. Therefore, our derivative is just 1 over x. So we're going to use the properties on these because they make it a lot easier for us if we can use them. Remember, there are three main properties we talked about. Those are our expansion properties. Let's take a look at number two. Now, I could use my old derivative rule. I could just write, watch this. F prime of x equals the derivative of natural log is 1 over this. Square root of x plus 1 times, now I've got to do the derivative of the inside. Well, that's just x plus 1 to the 1 half, so that becomes 1 half x plus 1 to the negative a half times 1. And I've got to rewrite this, and we would get 1 over 2 times the square root of x plus 1. And uh, as you notice, that does get kind of ugly because of the chain rule there. But this is what the properties do for us. Use them. Use your properties. They're supposed to make everything easy for us. And honestly, that's what log and exponential properties do for us. Logs and exponentials, they make problems easier. Think about it. They make multiplication into addition. It's a lot easier to add than to multiply. So by using my property, I can write this, my function now. I'm going to rewrite my function. This is the natural log of x plus 1 to the 1 half, I can now use my power rule for logs. And we get 1 half the natural log of x plus
plus 1. Now, I have not taken my derivative just yet. Now I'm going to take my derivative. Well, the 1 half is just a constant that can stay times the derivative of x natural log of x plus 1, my rule says, is just 1 over x plus 1. Now there is a chain rule there, but it's just multiplied by 1. And if you notice, we do get the same answer. Okay? We will get the same answer, and that's good. But just a little quicker to do it. All right, let's try number three. Now for number three, oh man, unfortunately here, there are no properties that work. So when we take the derivative, f prime of x, the natural log becomes 1 over x squared plus 2 times, there is a chain rule though, there's a chain rule, my inside derivative is 2x. And just leave it alone. There's your answer. Very easy to do these. All right, let's take a look at number four. So I heard you like natural logs. So you know what? I put a natural log inside of your natural log. So let's see what happens here. When we take the derivative, we're going to get dy dx equals the derivative natural log, my rule says, is just 1 over the inside. So this is a chain rule. There's my outside, so the derivative of my outside is just going to become 1 over natural log of x. Times, now i got to take the derivative of the inside. Well, what's the derivative of natural log of x? Just 1 over x. And there's your answer. You can leave it like this, but if you want to be fancy, you can go 1 over x natural log of x. And if you really hate yourself, 1 over natural log of x to the x. Use your power rule. Uh, this is fine right there. Okay, 5 and 6. I want you guys to notice a difference. 5 and 6, they both have this x and they both have this cubing. But where that cube is makes a big difference. For number 5, I can use my property. I can use my property and bring down the 3. That's my power rule. I can just bring down our power right here. So rewriting it, this is not the derivative, 3 times the natural log of x. And now when I take my derivative, y prime, the 3 is a constant, derivative of natural log is just 1 over x. So we get 3 over x. Now you may be like, um, I don't like that. You don't have to. You can just use chain rule. We would get 1 over x cubed times, what's the derivative of my inside? 3x squared. And if you simplify, we will get 3 over x again. So we get the same answer regardless. I do like the, sh the uh, properties because they do make them easier for us, and we'll see that later on. All right, let's take a look at number six. Okay. So for number six, we can't use the property because the 3 is not on the x. It's on the natural log. It's the whole quantity squared. It's the whole quantity cubed. This is our chain rule right here. Our outside function is the cubic graph. So when we take the derivative, dy dx, we're going to get this 3 times the natural log of x squared times the derivative of our inside. Well, what's the derivative of natural log of x? That's our new rule today. Just 1 over x. That's the only thing we're learning today. And there's our derivative. I guess you could say it's a bit derivative. Okay, moving on. Number seven. For number seven, we're going to do a little bit more with this one. Okay, so let's see here. For number seven, when we take the derivative, this is our product rule. So when we take the derivative, we would get dy dx equaling the first x times the derivative of the second, which is 1 over x, plus the second, the natural log of x, times the derivative of our first. So therefore, our derivative, dy dx, would become 1 plus the natural log of x. So let's apply this one. Let's find, I want you to write this down, where 
f of x is increasing. And of course, that should sound familiar to you, where f of x is increasing. This is our candidate, this is our first derivative test, so we're looking for our critical numbers. So we have to find our critical numbers, and those are where the derivative is 0. 1 plus natural log of x equals 0. Natural log of x equals negative 1. You should remember how to solve this. We, okay, so if you forgot how to solve exponentials, I do have another video on this, but let me go and review this with you. If you want to solve the natural log of x equaling a 3, the easiest way to do this one is we exponentiate. We undo natural log by exponentiating. We e both sides. Just make them the power. Those cancel. We left with e cubed. So if I have something like, let's say, natural log of x minus 3 equal to 1, well, to solve this one, I would exponentiate both sides. We would get then x minus 3 equals, that's just e, x would equal e plus 3. And that's how we solve exponential functions. Now, last year, your teacher might have, might have had to do something like this. Natural log of x equals 3. Put an e there, and you would do e to the 3 equals x. It's the same idea. This is just a little bit quicker. It's called exponentiation. <clears throat> it's all the cool kids are do, doing it. So if I have like negative 3, natural log of x plus 4 equals 7. Let's make that an 8, whatever. We get negative 3, natural log of x equals 4. Uh, make that a positive 3 for a reason that we have to deal with later on. We get the natural log of x. Actually, you can make that negative. Let's leave it negative. Sorry about that. Natural log of x equals negative 4 thirds. When you e it, you can't have e be a negative. x can't be negative, but uh, e can. This is e to the negative 4 thirds. Remember, this is not saying e is negative. The power is negative. This is still positive. x is still greater than 0. It's just that that on the bottom of a fraction. All right. Anyways, that leads us back to here. So when I solve natural log of x equals negative 1, we exponentiate both sides. So therefore, x equals 1 over e, or e to the negative 1. It is okay to leave this as a negative exponent. Doing our sign chart, 0 is the deal breaker. Can't be less than 0. Okay, here is e to the negative 1. So now I have to pick values. Now when I'm picking values for e, something between 0 and e to the negative 1, don't think of a number. Think of it in terms of e, like e to the negative 2. And if I plug that into the derivative, I'm going to get 1 minus 2. e to the negative 2 is just negative 2. So this is less than 0. It's decreasing. Take something greater than e to the negative 1, e to the 0. This will become 1 plus e to the, zero, e to the natural log of 0. That's just 0 there. That's greater than 0. So it's positive. So we are increasing on e to the negative 1 to infinity. And that is because the derivative f prime is greater than 0. Right there. That's a rule. All right. Go to video number 3. We'll take a look at a few more examples. Okay? See you then.